The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 27th, the terrific Tuesday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Would love to hear from you. 877-927-6648 is the number you call in. Now, if you've got a question, but you can't call in, you can always send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFN.com. Inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. And, of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Tuesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. All the U.S. indices that we track trading the upside. Dow's up 115, three tenths, four tenths for the S&P, 17, three tenths for the NASDAQ, 52, 1% for the Russell, 18, seven tenths for the semis, 25, two and three tenths percent for the trannies. That's 351 point move. Gold's off $8, silver's up 12 cents, slice wheat crude is down 33, natural gas off third, uh, penny, and the 30 treasury printed out at 127.16, that is off 19 ticks. Lead the charge, dollar wise, the upside, you've got uh, Saya Inc., the uh, transportation company up 6%, $21 move there. Old Dominion's up 17, 5%, Charter Communications up 16 or 5%, 4% for MicroStrategy, 1% for Mercado Libre, that's 11% move. The Shakers, Madrigal Pharmaceuticals off 33 bucks, nearly 14%. Thermo Fisher Scientific, 13 bucks, 2.5%. Regenerin down 10 bucks, 1.25%. Illumina off 8 bucks, 4%. Insulate Corporation down 2.6%. That's nearly an $8 move as well. So what are we going to take a look at? Well, I'll tell you what we're going to take a look at. Let's just do the usual out here. Let's take a look at short-term market breadth right now. That's a 30-minute time frame. Here we've got both the ES and the NQ. This is the S&P 500. Bullish market breadth, 308 above, 60 below. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ 100. What do we have out here? For its market breadth, currently for the 30-minute time frame, You've got 43 above, 22 below. So bullish for the short-term time frames. That'll be helpful as we go take a look at those 30-minute equity future charts. Let's take a look at the other four time frames that we monitor. This is for the S&P 500. Bullish for 60, 240 daily and weekly out there. So that does uh, positive. Uh, in the case of the NASDAQ, the only bearish sentiment out here is the daily time frame, 15 above, 40 below. So that's the only issue with regard to market breadth with regard to the S&P 500 and the NDX 100. Now let's take a look at their chart specifically. Let's go take a look at the daily time frame charts. For this, we'll go ahead and we'll shift screens. We'll take a look at the white background screens. Here you take a look at the ES mini, consolidating with inside its daily profile. No topping pattern that is formed at this stage here, not one that Stevie can find, not with regard to the ES mini. So it's got a good old-fashioned consolidation. If we take a look at the NQ, the NQ, which does have a top, it's a TD sequential top that formed right out here on June the 16th. That confirmed a few days later. I believe that was last Thursday on the 23rd. But here, that's all that's led to is a consolidation with inside profile. If we do get a close below um, 14,845, well, that would be bad news for the NQ out there. The 
The Dow Equity Future contract, all that it's done so far this morning is test resistance. Resistance sometimes can be old support. In this case, support was down at the bottom of its profile, was bullish in structure. That level was 34, 34, 101. Today's high, just out of curiosity, where are we at? Today's high was uh, 34,110. You got to love that. So the key area to be watching there is that 34,101. If price can regain that, then price should move up to 34,210-ish or so. The Russell 2000 is doing the same thing. It's going to be important come day's end. Can price close back inside its profile? To do that, you need to close above 1852.90. So consolidation clearly on the ES and the NQ, not so much on the Dow. Dow is really suggesting it wants to target the area of 33026. I'm not saying it'll get all the way down there. In the case of Russell, it wants to target the 1760 level. I would change my mind if price can regain that daily profile. Let's dive down a little bit further. To do that, let's take a look at, I don't know which first charts are up here. We've got the ES Mini. So the ES Mini has a TD9 count bottom for its five-hour time frame. Let's open up that chart. Let's take a look at it and investigate it. What is its message to us? Really two messages out here. The TD9 count pattern confirmed at 11 o'clock last evening. It completed at 4 o'clock this morning. Only Now, the other thing to look here on the five-hour time frame chart, if there's going to be a change in trend, what should we see out here? What's the likely thing that we should see? When you take a look at this five-hour time frame chart, it sticks out. It's very clear. Where is the resistance level that price needs to close above to suggest that, okay, something other than a counter trend move is underway? We'd have to say it'd be that oscillator and change line, which so far today was tested and rejected. Where is that level? Well, that level is at 43.86 or thereabouts. If price can close above that, that would be signaling to move to 44.04 to 44.08. If price closes below the low of the TD9 count pattern, that low is at 43.68.50, then we're looking to move to 43.51. The five-hour time frame chart for the ES is the key level to watch. It says uh, watch that oscillator and change line. That is a key area. The same can be said about the 240-minute time frame chart. The current bar here is going to close at 2 p.m. We can see here also how that oscillator and change line has acted as a resistance level. It is still resistance at 11.13 in the morning. A close above it, and it would be about 43.84 or so, would then signal move to 44.03 and above that 44.37. As far as bottom signals out here on a 240, I don't have it. Do we have to have it? No, because right now the 240 we're watching is that oscillator and change line out there. All right, what else do we have? Two-hour chart has got a nice momentum indicator bottom. It's led to really just a uh, a move where a counter trend rally in the ES mini would find resistance. Where is that? Let's open up the chart and explain that again further. Well, here, when you close below the bottom of a bullish structured profile, and the uh, ES did that for its two-hour time frame, it began doing that back here at about 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and this was on June 26th. This was yesterday. Once you get two consecutive bars below that on a bullish structured profile, if it's just a counter trend move, price will find resistance at the center of that profile. That is what's transpired ever since that bottom formed, this Rosemont to indicator bottom that formed here at 5 o'clock last evening. So the key level here to be watching, if this is more than a counter trend move, is going to be the 43.87, level, 43.86.50 to be exact. We're at 43.85.75 right now. That's the area to watch. If price closes above that, it's going to signal move up to the 4402 area. That's the ES Mini. We get back to this break. Let's take a look at the requests that have come in so far. Avgo for David, Cat for Hector, Nikes for Dan, VFC for Dan. Of course, I'd love to hear from you as well. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. Um, so I was just reading a note here. What are you sitting today? I try to get set up here. Let's take a look at uh, ticker symbol ABGO Broadcom. This is for David H. And his question is, will it fill the gap? And the gap he's referring to is one that formed between May 25th and May 26th. Uh, and that gap basically ranges from uh, a low of six uh, of 732.39 to a high of 747.02. And the question is, will it fill that gap? So let's take a look at the charts and see what the charts for ABGO are, com are, com are, are um, communicating to us out here, David. First of all, this is, looks like day number three below the bottom of its profile. The bottom of its profile is 838.73. There's no bottom signal that is in place out there, so it does suggest lower price. Will it get back to that uh, um, uh, that uh, support level, that breakout level, the breakout here, that gap to the upside, wide range of bar and 8.2 million shares the day before, 4.9 million shares. Pull back here over the last couple of days, been 3.7. Yesterday was uh, 2.1. Today so far, we're 271,000 shares. Well, okay, so um, you don't have the volume pushing down. I would say, though, that a price is going to continue lower. The next area of support out here is at 777.14. That is coming from the weekly chart that is a weekly oscillator and change line. So that becomes a target. The uh, profile level that you're looking at, not profile, but the gap area that you're looking for is to get down to 747. So that would be $30 away. So that's the first level, or that's the next level. The price would have to take out 777 to help answer your question and say, yes, it will fill that gap out there. Should price head lower? Yes. Do we have any volume behind the move? Even this bar right here, a wide range of bar from the trading day of June 12th, did volume of 5.1 million shares. That's on the way up, and yesterday you're pulling back with 2.1. So I'm going to go with, can it fill the gap? Yes. Is it giving us an indication that it will fill the gap? I'd say no. The other thing with regard to Broadcom, 
I mean, I would say there is something wrong here with regard to its pullbacks. This is going to be, well, yes, it was bar number seven or day number seven of consecutive pullbacks. So ideally, this should really bounce here. I mean, that's pretty extreme, uh, even for this instrument here. We've seen a couple of five bar pullbacks, but uh, seven, eight, we haven't. So I don't know what else is, is wrong out here, especially with those big wide range of bars to the upside. But you should get a bounce here over the course of the next day or two, maybe even today, you just close a little bit higher out there. So David, I hope that helps you out with regard to ticker symbol ABGO. And uh, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. I believe we have a caller. Let me see, we've got Brent in Martinez, California. Hey Brent, thanks for calling, thanks for holding, how are you? I'm doing great, Steve, welcome back, world traveler. Thank you, thank you, good to be back, but also really great to be traveling. I hadn't done a, a trip like that uh, really since 2014. So uh, great to be back. And uh, uh, last time when we spoke, you were celebrating a graduation, as I recall. How'd that go? Yeah, we went back to Boston, had a great time back there, got to meet Basil, which was oh, cool. very nice. You know, yeah, great guy. I've been, you know, of course, yeah. talking to him for, you know, whatever, probably 15 years. And uh, finally, actually meet him in person was great. Got to meet the family. So we had a, had a great time. Oh, that's very cool. Glad to hear that. You know, on my trip, I was able to meet a tiger as well. And, uh, you know, it was one of the highlights of the uh, trip out there. So very, very cool to hear that. Um, I know you're calling about Cybane Stillwater, uh, trading out right now at about $6.26 or so. Uh, what are you doing and how can I best help you? I don't have any position, Steve. I've just been watching this and there seems to be, there could be multiple a, B equals C, D, but there is one that, uh, and it's fairly symmetrical. Not that that's that big a deal, but yeah, um, I'm taking the, it should be the January, I think it might be the 13th, but around the middle of the month, high of around, it's like $12 roughly. Okay. And then uh, that would be the A point, and then the B point is down there in March. Yeah, about 782. Yeah. Up there in May, and then, so I mean, all, I think it comes out to be around, Five and change is what I, you know, one Correct. for one. So Correct. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. And then I just, I think we're in bar six on the daily. So I, it just seemed like it would make sense to just be patient and see if we maybe hit that number. I didn't know if there's some other level where roughly where it's at now that would make sense. Or if it's, to me, it seems to be worth waiting to, to see if we don't hit that number. Okay, perfect, perfect. So thanks for that explanation, folks. What uh, And I switched over to the black background chart, just easier to draw in the A to B equals CD. You'll see the A to B equals CD pattern that Brent mentioned over on the uh, center panel there, uh, the weekly chart. There are, as Brent pointed out, there are more than one A to B equals CD patterns. The one that he was referring to as that A point with $12.44, that was on January 13th. The B point for this was back on March the 7th down at 782. Now, the volume there was 6.6 .6 million shares. As this has been passed out here, there was 6.3 million shares. That was, yeah, so it has not been passed with volume. Does that mean it won't come to fruition? Absolutely not. And that price projection level is $5.26. That's the first price projection area. On a weekly basis, the weekly larger A to B equals CD to the downside. The A point out here, folks, is back on the week that began March 7, 2022, up at a price point of 2064. This makes a B point back in September 19th, the week that began September 19, 2022. Now, there were 20 million shares that traded hands that week. When that B point was passed, it was passed with 27 million shares. And that was the week of uh, May 8th. So on a weekly basis, we now have a confirmed weekly A to B equals CD to the downside. And that price projection level, well, that gets us down to basically zero. So we know that's not one. Well, I mean, not that that can't happen, Brent, but but that's not one that I would rely upon. So that just sends me back to your daily time frame chart. Does that make sense what we just did there or what I just did? The hocus pocus yeah, down I, I hocus saw thing. the other bigger one. That's kind of what I came over to. So I figured I'd just go with the uh, smaller one there. It yes. uh, at least seems like within reason that that could happen. Yeah. Uh, and, and with price below the bottom of a weekly profile and price below the bottom of a monthly profile, that certainly and the daily profile, that certainly adds the idea of lower price. Now, what I'll do is I'll switch back and take a look at the uh, white background charts. You are correct. Today is going to become bar number six of a TD nine count pattern out there. Now, a tons of gaps that I see out here. Is this uh, is there some currency issue with regard to this? It must be a currency Related. It's a South African company. South African. So okay. Probably, All right. Yeah. And the reason I ask that question is, folks, so that basically what I'm saying is ignore the gaps that are out there. 
Um, they, they don't have as much meaning uh, where we're dealing with the currency fluctuation issues out here. What the weekly chart does tell us, uh, Brent, is you are in bar number eight of a TD9 count, and a bullish reversal candle would confirm a Rogeman indicator bottom. So while you're watching the daily time frame chart, as price gravitates its way down towards that 526 level, watch the weekly chart as well. It'd be ideal to get both a weekly and a daily bottom on the weekly chart, either a TD9 count or Rosemont indicator bottom, and the daily maybe just simply a buy the D point pattern. So that's what I would be looking at there. Um, Brent, is there any additional information that I can provide for you on uh, still Cybane Stillwater or anything else? I think that's it for that one. I just, uh, yeah, I mean, we came up with the same numbers, and I, I think so far <clears throat> being patient is, is paid off. So I just, I'm kind of sitting waiting and, and, uh, I believe that makes the most sense at this point. Perfect, perfect. Well, always good to hear your voice, and uh, glad that uh, glad to hear that you and Basil got together. And uh, Brent, I will look forward to speaking with you again soon. But have a, a terrific Tuesday in the meantime. All right, do the same, Steve. Take care. You bet. That was Brent in Martinez, California. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. report as a precious metal gold is still king it continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the london otc market the u.s futures market and the shanghai gold exchange the gold report tom o'brien publishes his weekly gold report every monday morning for subscribers consisting of coverage of the xau hui gdx the dollar bonds the south african rand as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's take a look at our next request out here. This is coming in from Hector. Hector wants to take a look at that caterpillar. And it says, uh, Caterpillar, does it still have legs or is it time to check out? So we take a look at Caterpillar here. Uh, this formed a TD9 count top. That pattern completed on June 15th. And since then, we've had a retracement with price closing below the bottom of its profile on June 22nd. We've got below it. Uh, we were traded below it the next day, yesterday as well. That's your resistance zone, Hector, 239.21. If price can close above that, well, then it should get back to 243 or 248. If that holds as resistance, this could be setting up, could be setting up. A A to B equals C D to the downside. Could because I don't know if that's the case, but you'd be below profile, below green asset or in change line with 214.01 uh, dangling out there. I would say the next move to the downside. This is under the assumption that 239.21 uh, continues to hold as resistance. If it does, then the next move to the downside would be 231.74. That is the weekly asset or in change line. Prices above profiles there. I would at least wait. I don't know how long you've been in this position. I think uh, for quite a while. I would wait to see if uh, that area holds. 231.76. You've got a consolidation on the monthly. Um, I, you know, just uh, watch it. Watch, watch today's action. Watch that 239.21 level. So is it time to sell? You should get at least a two-day rally inside the market. That would be normal. So assuming that we get that, maybe come back and see where Caterpillar is trading tomorrow, uh, Hector and uh, Patty. But the weekly chart looks uh, really good. The monthly, just a consolidation. Dan wants to take a look at Nike's. Nike, they're coming out with earnings on Thursday, a couple days from now. Now, Nike out here has got this beautiful island bottom pattern. So that candle formation, that formed, uh, that was uh, June 1st candle. Uh, it formed uh, between the uh, periods of uh, May 31st and June the 2nd. So you got that nice, that's a very bullish signal out here. Price above profile levels, Dan, looks to me like it wants to target 119.15. Price made a nice move and pulled back to test support, the oscillator and change line. You're trading into a swing point from June 16th. That did volume of 14 million shares. So far today, you've done nearly 2 million. So it's moving in that swing point lighter, but it's above resistance levels. So this is saying that Nike wants to trade higher or could trade higher. On a weekly time frame, you have a confirmed Gartley buy pattern with price consolidated with inside its bullish structure profile. You've been above the center of the bullish structure profile for three weeks now. Price wants to go target 114.64 to 115.79. And on a monthly time frame out there, price pulled back last month, tested support, the bottom of its profile. You're just consolidating with inside that profile. It looks like Nike wants to move higher, um, you know, based upon their earnings report. At least that's what I'm seeing. The, the, the thing that's weak out here is certainly the volume today as it moves into a swing point. But it is summertime, so you've got to give that a little bit of consideration. So I hope that helps you out, Dan, with regard to Nike. You also want to take a look at VFC out here. So let's get over and take a look at that instrument. VFC right now trading out at about 1905, consolidating with inside the daily profile, forms a seventh wave move and a roads momentum indicator bottom. Both those patterns were confirmed on June 2nd. That has led to just simply a sideways consolidation. No reason to think that price won't go target the top of that consolidation or top of its profile, Dan, and that's at 1994. The weekly chart has a nice confirmed roads momentum indicator bottom, with price consolidating between support and resistance of its profile, 1745 to 2016. The uh, monthly chart not helping you out a whole lot, but the daily looks good, the weekly looks good. But, of course, in the end, when I say it looks good, it's just a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside his profiles. But it does look to me like this wants to make a move to 1994 or 2016. So I hope that helps you out. Nancy wants to take a look at Apple. And her specific question was, can Apple get to 187 today? It's a 186.28. So for that answer, we want to take a look at the intraday chart, see if there's anything here that we can assist Nancy with or that the markets can assist us with in trying to answer that question. Hmm. So I take a look at a 30-minute time frame chart out here. We'll just open this up. What do we see? We see a wave number seven top led to a uh, move lower. I don't have any pattern on that move lower. Price is just consolidated with inside that profile, but not really providing us with a really wonderful read out here. The read that is providing us right now at 11.35 is no, I would say the answer to that question, because price is back below resistance. The 65 minute chart shows that it's oscillator and change on its resistance, Nancy. So in order to get to the level that you're looking for, price is gonna have to take out that high. 
By take out that high, I'm referring to 186.71. You need to see a close above that. If you get a close above that, price should start running up towards. This is a 65-minute chart. The high from 1030 yesterday, which was up at the 188.05 level. If I look at a 60-minute time frame chart, the 60-minute time frame chart shows a confirmed Roach momentum indicator top with price consolidating with inside its profile. 187.17 is a resistance area there. And I see tops along the daily time frame. The daily time frame has a Roach momentum indicator top, a TD9 count top. Resistance here being the top of its profile. That's at 186.99. Your question was about 187. Maybe it was 187 and change. Today's high out here was 187.04. At this stage here, I, I don't recall how much further you wanted, uh, Nancy, but it looks to me like that that could easily be the high for Apple as we uh, speak. So I hope that helps you out, and uh, thanks so much for taking the time to write in. We've got a request to take a good gold futures out here. So for that, let's actually pull all of this multi-time frame charts up. Give me a moment to get back here. This will populate. And the question was, uh, the question was just, this was more GPHPH inside the Tiger's Den. And I believe the question was just simply if we could take a look at gold futures. So those are populating right now. What gold futures do not have on a daily time frame is a very clear bottoming pattern out there. They do have a small, there's several A to B equals CD patterns. In fact, maybe what I should do, where do I have that? Let me see if I've got that on my black background shirts. GC uh, Q23. Sorry about that, folks, but I just want to see where I've got this information if I do have it. And if not, then I'll figure out game plan B. So um, where did I put that? <laughs> Stevie, Stevie. Well, we can just rebuild stuff. So let's let's do this here. I'm going to change screens because we're talking about A to B equals CD patterns. Well, first, let me just say, stay here for a second. So with regard to Goldilocks, a gold has a, a, way, a seventh wave move top on the weekly time frame. Price last week closed below profile. If we close below last week's low, last week's low is down at the 19-1950 level. We're likely headed lower, and maybe we'll form a TD9 count bottom on the weekly time frame. With regard to other intraday signals out here, I don't really see much other than the two-hour chart at a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. Price came back, tested, and rejected that swing point. Okay, so let's go back over to uh, – you wanted me to look at uh, gold. Um, so no clear bottom here, but I was back to the daily time frame. Well, on the daily time frame chart, we mentioned this with regard to, I believe, the five-hour and four-hour time frame chart for the ES Mini that we looked at. How important is the oscillator and change line for the daily time frame out here? You, you see that? Um, a GPHP out here, that is a real key level. And so at a minimum, price is going to need to close above that in order to suggest there may be some kind of change in trend with regard to gold. Real quickly, I'll change over and take a look at the uh, black background chart. You'll see at least one A to B equals CD pattern out here. And that's the one that's really that's in play out here, in my opinion. That gets us down to about the 1848 level. You've got a new profile that is formed. That new profile has support at... Uh, You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So the new profile that formed in uh, gold has got support at 1925.60. We're trading just below that right now. Watch that area. Resistance up at 1956. So a fairly narrow box. So I've got one A to B equals CD to the downside that would take us to the 1848 level. The smaller one that I put in during the breakout there, it's more kind of a vertical line. You know, we would be at the one to two A to B equals CD to the downside. And two days ago, you had a key reversal bar. So technically, you've got a confirmed by the D point pattern that would be negated with a close below 1919.50 out there. But the larger A to B equals CD is the one that is in play out here as well. Price is below the bottom of its weekly profile. That's gold that I'm referring to there. So likely we're looking at some uh, lower price uh, coming at us. So I hope that helps you out with regard to uh, your look for uh, your request for uh, gold. Let's go to our next request. We're going to change screens for this. This is coming in from Bob in Spokane. He wants to take a look at ticker symbol ENVX. So let's get that fired up on our screens out here, see what it is uh, doing. ENVX currently trading at 1580. Having a wonderful day, taking out TD9 count resistance. That TD9 count resistance was from the trading day of March 31st, 2023. And it closed today above 1548. We're trading at 1580 right now. We'll negate that pattern, and that suggests a nice move to the upside. We can see an A to B equals CD out here that's in play. Your only thing to worry about there would be some type of bearish reversal candle. If you got that, that would then generate a sell the D point pattern. We don't have that as we speak right now. As far as where does price want to head to? Well, you close, you're trading above the top of its uh, day, a weekly profile. You're trading above a TD9 count from the daily time frame as well as the weekly time frame. That weekly time frame TD9 resistance area was 1548. Was that the same on the daily? Uh, 1548 it was. So a close on Friday above that is then going to trigger a, uh, well, first volume-wise, that TD9 count had volume of 45 million shares. This week so far, just a day and a half, you're at 18 million. But that sounds pretty decent out there. But if you've got the volume, if you had a confirmed close above that area on a weekly basis, I'll just simply draw in the A to B point. I'll just move that over to the C to D leg. And that takes you up to about the $18 area out there, currently traded at 1585 22.49 is the longer term uh, spot that price wants to trade to. Uh, Bob, that is the top of the bullish structured 
monthly profile. So the daily looks great, the weekly looks great, the, the monthly looks good out there. So best of luck to you in ticker symbol ENVX. That was Bob in Spokane. No spin inside the Tigers Den wants to take a look at CVS out here. So we take a look at CVS trading out right now at 68.47. This formed a TD9 count top. It did this on the trading day of June the 13th. Then price gaps down, closes below its breakout level at 68.05. You're testing that 68.05 area this morning as well. A volume on that gap to the downside on June 14th was 23 million shares. So far today, this has traded about 6.2 million shares, so about a 12 million share day out here. It's still below profile. The weekly chart on CBS has a confirmed road momentum indicator bottom. The weekly chart really tells us no spin what's going on here. You have a nice confirmed bottom. We had one on the uh, the daily time frame as well. But here in the weekly, we can see how price just simply is consolidating with inside profile. So there's a very clear support level, level 67.43, and a very clear resistance area, 71.77. The monthly chart does not have any kind of a bottom and could suggest to you and I that over time, price wants to target 56.19. The only way that's going to happen is if we get a failed weekly uh, bottom pattern here that would require a close on a weekly base below 66.34. So bring CBS together for Stepo. I'd say you got just a good old fashioned consolidation. If you're looking to buy consolidation, you try to buy them towards the bottom of it. Well, that's 67.43. This is trade at 68.52. Is there any signal on a 30 minute time frame chart to suggest that uh, the you know now would be the time to enter into a trade? I don't see that here just yet on the 30-minute uh, time frame. But if you're looking to get into CVS and the weekly could encourage you to do that, just buy towards the bottom of that consolidation. So no spin, I hope that helps you out as well. Nicholas wrote in, he wanted to take a look at Microsoft. And Microsoft does have an A to B equals CD to the downside. That A to B equals CD looks like this. Let's simply expand out the chart. That took place yesterday. So the B point on this had bought, this is gonna be from the trade day of June 21st, 25 million shares. Yesterday, this did 21 million shares out there. So it's not confirmed, but it still is in place out here. Here's A to B, basically, and then B to C. I'll just simply move this over to the B point. That could take us down to about the 319-ish area out there. So that's what we see on the daily time frame. But it already has a wave seven top, a rose momentum indicator top. And because we're below the uh, profile, the bottom of that profile, which is 334.60, as long as we remain, we remain below that, Nicholas, that A to B equals CD to the downside becomes a likely target. Now, I gave you 320-ish, 324.70 or so is the oscillator and change line for the weekly time frame. We can see on a monthly time frame, Microsoft has gotten back to a prior swing. It's given up some of those gains. It's still bullish, but it's struggling up at that top. Now, on a monthly basis, the volume at that candle session was 509 million shares. Granted, the month is not over, but we're pretty close here at 466. So it does have some pretty decent volume as it was moving into that swing point out there. That could suggest or should suggest that we get back up here to retest that again. Weekly chart, no bottom pattern, uh, no topping pattern, I should say. Other than it, uh, well, no, I take that back. It's got a wave seven. It looks like Microsoft wants to head lower, Nicholas. And I'm going to say 324 and change is where this is likely headed to. Um, Satish wants to take a look at DHR. Do I have that there? There we go. So DHR, DR Horton, I believe. Um, and the question was hold or fold. So you are trading, or this is trading below profile right now. Close below 232.81, could suggest to move to 223.61. So you got to make that decision on the fold it, depending on whether you know, that puts you into a losing position, you're in a winning position or whatever those parameters are for you. 5.1 million shares is on that candle that we're going into. So far today, this has done 1.6 million. So you're a little bit light on the volume, but it's still pushing with volume versus yesterday. And it's trading below that 232.81 level. But if it pushes below that area with lighter than 5.1 million shares, maybe price is just going to test the 228.41 area out there. Close below that would get us to 223.61. The weekly chart says we're back below a red oscillator and change line. This says it wants to get to 229.22. That is the center of that bullish structured weekly profile. We're below profile in the monthly, so we're not out of the woods here. 211.22 is the uh, target. So knowing that we formed a nice TD9 count 
bottom on the daily time frame. Price went right up to where it had broken down from, 243.70. And now we're back below profile. Odds favor a move back to the 223.61 area. But use those parameters. Use the volume um, metrics that I gave you to make that decision out there. And I do hope that that helps you out. Now, if I take a look at the consecutive days to the uh, downside out here, Let's see what we've got. Consecutive days down. This would be day number two. And we can see that uh, this, during since the move off of the bottom out here, the move off of the May 17th bottom out here, each retracement has just lasted for two days out there. So that may provide you with some information as well. Or maybe if you're trying to exit this position and you're coming back with lighter volume, maybe you hold on to it for a little bit of a, a two-day, uh, maybe a two-day rally out there. Satish, I hope that helps you out with regard to DHR. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Looks like when we close out this show, we'll take a look at December corn. For Coder, is looking to go along in the 546 area. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at the December corn contract out here. As we look at this, what do we see? Well, one, there was a new profile that formed yesterday, and uh, price is trading below the bottom of that profile on the daily time frame. That is at 568.68. We close below that. It opens up the door for a move back to its breakout level of 496.75. Before price would get down there, on a five-hour time frame chart, this formed a Rhodes momentum indicator top. And before price could get to 496, it would have to take out the 549. 
175 level. That's a TD nine count breakout area for the five hour time frame. I know that you're monitoring the four hour chart. The four hour chart shows a wave seven top, a road momentum indicator top, a TD nine count bottom that failed here. That bottom failure took place at eight o'clock this morning. That suggests lower price. There's an A to B equal CD to the downside. Now this retracement here is less than. 0.618 retracement out there. That says be careful because when you do less than a 0.618 retracement, that's that B to C leg coder. Odds favor you do more than a one to one A to B equals C D. The one to one would take you back towards the 240 minute breakout level of 547.50. So keep an eye there. What you're looking for is a bullish reversal candle on the four hour time frame chart to confirm a buy the D point pattern. The two hour chart, you are going to looks like you will form a TD nine count bottom. You will confirm that pattern at uh, 2 p.m. at 12 noon. No, when we get off the show in the next uh, four and a half minutes out there. But a lower low can form on the bar following bar number nine out there. So that says look for a potential low between 12 noon and uh, 2 p.m. out there. Uh, the intraday chart's really not providing you a ton of information. Do have a TD nine count bottom on the 60 minute chart. So that would suggest if you see a close below 558.50 for an hourly time frame, you're headed lower out there. The last request came in uh, real quickly here. It was an entry point inside of ticker symbol B-I-L-L, -L, Mr. Bill, inside the Tiger's Den. Real quickly, I'd have to go with between 98.95 and 96.74. I don't know if price will get down there, but that would be the area that I would be looking at for entry points on ticker symbol B-I-L-L. -L. Folks, thanks so much for all the requests out there. Stay tuned for great programming. I'll be back with you on wonderful Wednesday. Please have a terrific Tuesday. Don't forget about the Tiger Day sale. Tiger tiger um a dollar sale that's going on as we speak right now take care folks we'll see you tomorrow